and welcome to Kachi Bachi. Today we're talking about my sewing must-haves. So these are by no means absolute essentials, but they're things that definitely make my sewing more comfortable, more peaceable, and I have more fun as a result of that. The first thing that I really, really love is storage. So I have multiple different types of storing my projects, containing them so that it can keep it organized, um, whether it's a sewing kit, a project box, a project bag, smaller project bags. This is my like actual sewing. Um, if I'm doing garments and stuff like that, this is my garment bag. This is my hand embroidery, the current project that I'm in, and then my current sewing project um, or quilting project. So I like having lots of different options and ways to keep myself organized. For me personally, that is absolutely important. The other thing that you can see about all of my projects here is that they're clear. So I know what's in there and they don't get hidden. Um, so I can actually say, oh, where is that? And then I can just go and find it by looking. I don't have to open a bunch of boxes in order to figure those things out. So for me, that is really important. Um, and it just makes me happy. I like staying organized. The next thing that I have is a pin cushion. And this one was a gift from one of my favorite people, Miss Roxanne, and I use it every day. I think it's so stinking adorable. Um, so this, though, houses my Annie's Silk Head Pins. Um, so I have another pin cushion, which is definitely sentimental. I keep it because my mom made it for me and it's just sweet. This was the type of pin cushion she had when I was growing up. It's a little hat pin cushion and it's just fun and it has some just generic sewing pins on it. Um, I find myself going to this guy though because it's where I put my silk head pins. So these pins are much finer than these pins. I don't know if that's something you can see there. But because these are slightly thinner, they glide through my material a whole lot easier. And to me, they're the perfect length. They're, whoopsie daisy, um, they're not too long. Not that this is too long. Sometimes you want an extra long pin. This for me is my everyday average. So it's a very thin, fine pin and it glides in my material beautifully. And then they have glass heads so that if my iron hits it, it doesn't melt to my project or destroy my pin. So I really, really love these pins. They're like twice the price of the normal ones, but once I used them, I was not able to go back. Um, it definitely is not worth fighting to get your pins through multiple layers of material, and I don't have to do that with these. So for me personally, thin, good silk pins are a must for my everyday sewing. The other thing that I use is a glue pen. So there's a couple different ones out there. This is from Bowen um, and it is a wash away glue so it's not permanent but it's in a pin style so it's very easy for me to get just a small amount exactly where I want it. And one of my old friends, Mr. Bill, actually taught me this trick of when you have a seam that just keep slipping when you're trying to match it and it doesn't want to stay in place, you glue it. And then when you sew it, your pin can't pull out and let it slip. You sew it and it stays in place. Um, I don't do it with every single seam, but I do it when I get to those really frustrating ones that just don't want to stay for me. This makes a really big difference. Um, so I keep a glue pin on or around me anytime that I am sewing. The next thing I have is a lotion bar. So this is from Lavache and it's just a little like shea butter and I like the peppermint scent. There's a ton of different scents out there. These are really great because they don't transfer to my material or to my project. I can keep my hands lotioned. If you have dry hands then it winds up sticking or catching on your material. And depending on what you're working with, that can be a problem, it can cause you runs, but it's also just uncomfortable. So I like having lotion nearby, and that one won't stain or leave oily spots on my material, so I really like that. So then I have Best Press, and I keep two types of it. So this is a squirt bottle, which is great for doing yardage and spraying large areas. And then I have my spritz bottle, and that is good for 
smaller blocks or just when I'm doing block by block, I'm not wasting a bunch of spray on my surface and I actually can contain it to the project that I'm working on. I get an even more fine mist with my spritz bottle here. Um, and stay tuned, we're going to be doing a video shortly on the difference between the acorn pressing solutions and best press and flatter spray. So that's coming up. The last thing that I want to show you or talk about is lighting. So I am married to a light guru uh, because he does video stuff. And so there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lights happening right now. Surprisingly enough, and that's still not enough. He makes sure that I have plenty of light when I'm sewing. Um, so this is a gooseneck light that puts an LED light directly where I want it. So it mounts to my sewing machine. Oops, sorry if that kind of flashed in your eyes. Um, so it mounts to my sewing machine. I can mount it up top. It has a base that allows me to release it if I can do it with my it not being mounted. So I can get multiple of these bases and I have one on the top of my machine and one on the side and that allows me to move my light from the top or to the side so I can get my light exactly where I want it. Um, this was kind of one of those like serendipitous discoveries. My light bulb burnt out on my machine um, years ago and I couldn't find it at any local store and so I get real cautious buying things online that are real specific because particularly with sewing machine parts they'll like even list your sewing machine as a compatible accessory for it and then I've purchased it and it doesn't fit my machine and that's really annoying to me and so I didn't want to buy a light bulb online and so I bought this and I had so much more light than I ever had with the little bitty light bulb on my machine um, and so from then on even with new machines I always keep this and always have it when I'm going to class or whatever this is something I will absolutely always have on my sewing machine because it gives me additional light no matter how many LED lights now come on my sewing machine I still want this um, and just a tip for any of you that have slightly older machines if you are interested now they make replacement LED bulbs, which are amazing. So instead of getting the like little dollar fifty, two dollar, just basic 50, 25 watt light bulb to put in your machine, you can get a much brighter, much longer lasting light bulb that's LED for like eight dollars, and you kind of can't beat that. And those they have it in both the screw in and the push in type. So if you have not replaced your sewing machine light bulb, or if you need to replace your sewing machine light bulb go for the LED. It is a world of difference and you'll be so bummed if you don't because um, it definitely, light is one of the greatest commodities that we have. Um, and so keep yours bright. Yeah. Um, but these are my basics that just make me happy when I'm sewing. They're things that I would not sew without. Um, I absolutely have to have those things. Um, and these are just my favorites. If there's anything that you would recommend, absolutely. I would love to hear it. I love learning new things and finding new toys because this is what we do for fun. And so you want to keep it fun. You want to keep it easy. And so any tips you would have, absolutely send them my way. I would love to feature them here from you. Um, if you're interested in seeing any more of these or following us, just hit the subscribe button, like us, like this video, share it with your friends. Um, and helping. I don't have anything else to say. So here's a bonus for the day if you're interested. This is one of my ongoing UFOs. It's um, some hand embroidery and hand applique and so it's just um, a caricature from one of my favorite books and so eventually it will get worked into a quilt but this is The Doubtful Guest by Edward Gorey and these are just different scenes from the book that we've been or I've been slowly embroidering on and appliquing over the years. So this is one of those little things that I don't get to work on super super often but it definitely makes me happy. It's going to be probably one of my favorite quilts that I'll ever make in my life. Um, it's just one of those. So I love it. I have fun with it every time I get to pull it out but unfortunately I don't get to pull it out all that often, so enjoy.
enjoyed 